It is the day before Christmas in Washington, D.C., where final preparations are underway for the tree lighting ceremony on the White House lawn. We join newscaster Jimmy Olsen as he moves through the crowd outside the fence. Hi, everybody. What a day this is. There's an excitement in the air like you wouldn't believe. Never saw so many happy faces. The holiday spirit is so strong you can almost feel it. Uh, e excuse me, sir. I'm Jimmy Olsen, WGBS-TV. Uh, can I talk to you for a minute? Uh, sure. How do you like Washington? Great. What do you think of that tree up there? Fantastic. I'm from Oregon, and I know something about trees. And I tell you, that's got to be the biggest Christmas tree ever. Make a great show when the lights go on. Thank you, sir. And, and you, ma'am, what do you think of all this? Beautiful, just beautiful. I can hardly wait until tonight. It will be almost as beautiful as stars over my home state of Alabama. Thank you, ma'am. And you, sir, have you ever been to one of these? And while Jimmy Olsen continues his interviews, we switch to the WGBS studios in Metropolis, where Lois Lane and Clark Kent are watching a studio monitor. Isn't he doing a great job, Clark? And on his first big assignment... Sure is. And so is the cameraman, getting some great close-ups. Matter of fact, I thought I saw someone I... Oh, look, that young couple and their little daughter. Listen. And you say you're from Ohio, right? First time in Washington. And it's all so wonderful. When are they going to turn on the lights, Daddy? Right after dark, Amy. And it'll be the biggest, brightest, most beautiful Christmas tree you ever saw. It'll light up the whole lawn. Will it light up the whole world, Daddy? Light up the whole world? Oh, Clark, isn't Light he adorable? Light up the whole world! Light up the whole world! Light up the whole world! Clark, what's wrong? Oh, uh, nothing. Uh, just a little headache. It'll go away. I think I'll just go out for a little air. Walk down by the river. But something was wrong, and the man of steel felt a deep uneasiness grip his whole being. That face I saw in the crowd during Jimmy's interviews and what the little girl said light up the whole world. Somehow they go together like parts of a puzzle, but I can't seem to make them fit. If only I could remember. And as he walks along, racking his brain for answers that don't come, he sees the U.N. building ahead and decides to go in and listen to the debate in the Security Council in an overtime session. And in conclusion... I wish to place my government irrevocably on record in favor of this giant step forward on the road to peace. Thank you. It is my great privilege and honor as chairman to announce that the Security Council of the United Nations has this day voted unanimously in favor of the resolution banning the use of all nuclear weapons. I wish to thank the delegates for their devotion to duty and their self-sacrifice in giving up so much of their holiday time so that this legislation could be completed. That is good news, and it's about time. Banning nuclear weapons is the best... Nuclear weapons! That's it! That face in the crowd! It was Thurston Kilgore, the great nuclear physicist. The last time I saw him was... Yeah, a Senate committee hearing eight years ago. Let me see if I understand you correctly, Dr. Kilgore. You say we now have nuclear superiority enough to deter... Not just superiority, Senator, and not just a deterrent. We have the capacity to destroy our enemies at one stroke, right now, today. You mean... I that... mean we should launch our nuclear missiles immediately. Without warning of any kind? Without warning, without delay, without mercy. Wipe them all out. You would destroy over 600 billion human beings, men, women, children, just like that? Just like that. <laughs> it will be the greatest display of man-made firepower in the history of the universe. He's mad. America will be the master of the world for a thousand years. That will be all, Dr. Kilgore. No one will dare oppose us. No one. Remove that man. We will remake every government in the world in our image. <laughs> and those that oppose us. One of the most brilliant scientists of our time had obviously lost his mind and had to be confined in a mental institution. Diagnosed a hopeless case. A hopeless case. Running loose on the streets of Washington. Great Krypton. I've got to get down there right now. This is a job for... Superman. <laughs>
As the mightiest man in the world races through the darkening sky, little does he realize how justified his fears are. At that very moment in his secret laboratory, not far from the White House, Thurston Kilgore is talking. Ah, you're awake, my young friend. Good. Soon you will have the privilege of being part of the greatest Christmas happening in 2,000 years. <laughs> oh, all right. I'll remove the gag. But it's no use trying to call for help. No one can hear you. Hold still a minute. Ah, there you are. I don't understand. Who are you? And what's the big happening you're talking about? And why are you holding me in this place? I am Thurston Kilgore, scientist. But soon I shall be Thurston Kilgore, master of the world. Master of the world? You've got to be kidding. Kidding? Not at all. You see these television screens? I'll turn on number one. What do you see? The White House. The Christmas tree on the lawn. And here's number two. Now, what do you see? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Looks like... Yeah, a missile at a rocket site. Very good. That rocket, by the way, is ready for immediate launching and carries a payload of five nuclear warheads, each 100 times as powerful as the Hiroshima bomb. But what has this got to do with... Patience, young man. Patience. And now, screen number three. Another rocket. And four. And five. And six. There you are. The whole picture. Five multiple head rockets. All tied to the controls in the war room of the Pentagon and targeted on our enemies. But the only person authorized to push the button is... Yes? The President of the United States. Precisely. But we're not at war and he's not about to push that button. Quite right. Not that button and not knowingly. But there are buttons and buttons. I still don't. But the button that will turn on the lights on that beautiful Christmas tree. On the White House lawn? Right. You mean to say that button is tied into the rocket launch system you just showed me? Now you're getting it. It's tied in by a remote control circuit I secretly installed. And when the president pushes the button that lights the tree... Good Lord. <laughs> For a brief moment, the lights will go on. And then a bomb concealed in one of the tree ornaments will detonate, destroying everyone in the immediate area. Including the president? Especially the president. And simultaneously, five beautiful rockets will soar like avenging angels through the night sky. And when they reach their targets, they will light up the whole world. <laughs> but what have I got to do with all this? Why hold me? Because you, my young friend, are the bait in a trap I have set to capture and eliminate once and for all the only man who could possibly interfere with my plan. Superman. Isn't this exciting? What time will they turn on the lights, Harry? Yeah, I don't know. It should be any time now. Will we be able to see the president from here? Well, I think so. We got here early enough to pick a good spot. Hey, mister, watch where you're going. Oh, my gosh, it's Superman. I'm sorry, sir. I was looking for a young newscaster, Jimmy Olsen. He was interviewing people right around here a little while ago. Have, have you seen him? Oh, sure. He interviewed us. Did you see where he went? That's we saw. I went over to that van over there. Oh, the WGBS mobile unit. Thanks. Nobody here. What's this on the seat? A note addressed to me. If you want to see Jimmy Olsen alive, come to the top floor of the warehouse at the end of L Street. Signed, TK. TK. Thurston Kilgore. So I was right. He was the one I saw on TV. And at that moment, a cheer goes up from the crowd. Hey, look, it's the president. I know there's something wrong here, something involving the president, but I don't know what it is, and I have to go see Jimmy. Well, this is the warehouse, but I don't... Come in, Superman. The door is open. Kilgore. Welcome, Superman. <laughs> Where's... Oh, Jimmy, there you are. Are you all right? So far, but you've got to stop him, Superman. He, he's, he's going to... Don't worry. I'll take care of him. You'll take care of nothing, Superman. You're through. Superman, what's wrong? I feel weak. I feel dizzy. And soon you will feel nothing. This machine duplicates the deadly rays of green krypton. The only substance that can destroy the mighty Superman. <laughs> and so I leave you both. 
In a few minutes, you, Superman, will be dead. And my crypto ray machine will self-destruct, wiping out all evidence of my connection with this place, including you, little Jimmy. If only I could get loose. Ta-ta, both of you. I'm off in my armored car to watch the president light up the world. And just today, the day before Christmas, the United Nations Security Council, in extraordinary session, voted unanimously to ban all nuclear weapons. <laughs> On this glorious night before Christmas, therefore, there is more hope than ever that peace on Earth and goodwill to all mankind can become a reality. Come on, get on with it. Get on with it. Light up the tree, Mr. President. And so with great joy in my heart, I press the button that will light up this beautiful symbol of brotherhood and love. And just as his finger touches the button, the figure of the mightiest man on earth swoops down out of the sky. It's Superman! Tears one of the ornaments off the tree and hurls it high into the night sky, where it explodes harmlessly with a roar. Now the president is safe at least, but I was too late to prevent the rockets from being fired. We've got to stop them somehow. And then occurred one of the most incredible events in the history of the world. Crisscrossing the skies at unbelievable speed, a man of steel flies to each of the five rockets in rapid succession, changes their course in mid-flight, and heads them on a collision course with the sun, where their death-dealing potential will be fused with the life-giving energy of Earth's great star. Later, back at the WGBS studios in Metropolis. What an incredible story, Jimmy. By sheer luck, my chair fell over as I struggled to break the ropes I was tied up with. And I fell against Kilgore's crypto ray machine, knocking it over and putting it out of action. With the ray stopped, of course, Superman's strength returned. And since Kilgore had shown me where the bomb on the Christmas tree and all the rockets were located, I told Superman, and you know the rest. What happened to Kilgore? In a way, I, I feel kind of sorry for him. The failure of his plan was too much for his twisted mind. And the police picked him up, babbling like a baby on the White House lawn. Clark Kent, where in the world have you been? Well, uh, I, I hate to admit it, but I was tired and went up to my room for a nap. Uh, what did I miss? I go on the air at midnight. Listen, and you'll find out. You're on, Miss Lane. Merry Christmas, everyone. This is Lois Lane with the latest WGBS inside story of how Superman saved the life of the president and prevented World War III in what will probably go down as one of the greatest Christmases. As an unsuspecting world prepares to celebrate that happiest of holidays, Christmas, a powerful nuclear submarine running silent and deep under the massive polar ice cap makes its way north to a spot directly below the only inhabited region in an otherwise desolate world of ice and snow. Navigational bearings read out, computer. Navigational bearings read out, latitude 90.0 degrees north, longitude 0 degrees. Excellent. Engine room, all engines stop. All engines stop. Proceed with drilling operation. Drilling operation proceeding. A powerful laser drill operating through the conning tower cuts a hole straight up through the ice through which the captain climbs and steps out into the snow-covered streets of the tiny sleeping village above. Making his way unerringly to the home of the white-bearded patriarch of the community, he bursts in the door, gun in hand. You there! Get up! Get up! Uh, what, what time is it? Never mind! Get up and get dressed! You're coming with me! But where? It isn't time to ride in the reindeer... No questions! Move! Silently, they walk back to the hole in the ice and down into the waiting sun. The captain wastes no time. All engines, full speed ahead. All engines, full speed ahead. 
And like a gray-black ghost, her massive engines purring softly in the murky depths, the powerful subsail silently soaked with its precious cargo. The next morning, the international airways are crackling with reports of an event of cataclysmic import. From the Soviet Union, we hear... This is Radio Moscow. It is with the deepest regret that we announce that our beloved Grandfather Frost is lost. The implications of this catastrophe transcend all ideological and national barriers. In France, a weeping announcer can barely get the words out. The unthinkable, the unspeakable, the unbelievable has happened. Papa Noel has disappeared. Il est perdu, lost, gone, vanished. This is the voice of Vienna. Saint Nicholas is missing. It is rumored that he fell through a hole in the ice and possibly drowned. And from America, an incredulous newsman with a typically American response. Santa Claus gone? Impossible. In the U.N. building in New York, an emergency executive meeting of the Security Council is called into session. The devastating effect of this event on the children of the world on this day before Christmas could be a tragedy beyond measure. I propose, therefore, that an international investigating commission be sent to the North Pole immediately. Santa Claus must ride again. But on a supposedly deserted island in the Pacific, an old enemy of Wonder Woman gloats over the success of her plan. Well done, von Richter. Thank you, Your Majesty. Once before I had a plan, a plan that failed only because of Wonder Woman. But phase one of my new master plan has now been completed, and this time I shall not fail. You will not fail, Your Majesty. For I am Brunhilde, mighty Teutonic goddess, returned from Valhalla on a sacred mission, and no one, not even Wonder Woman, shall stand in my way. <laughs> Meanwhile, on sunny Paradise Isle, her ancestral home and legendary home of the Amazons, Wonder Woman walks along the beach with her mother, Queen Hippolyte, unaware of the turmoil raging in the outside world at that moment. Oh, Mother, it's been so wonderful to be home, free of the troubles and worries of the world of ordinary humans, if only for a little while. To take the cares of that world on your shoulders was your own choice, Diana, and now there is no turning back for you. You must return. It is the law of the gods. And as Wonder Woman flies back to America in her invisible plane, far above in the realm of the gods, Aphrodite, goddess of love, listens to a boastful god of war, the mighty Mars. <laughs> and there you have it, my dear Aphrodite. All the elements of this little play are in place. All the actors on stage. Once again... My powers and yours face each other in the classic confrontation about to take place down there in the world of humans. Good against evil, love against hate, light against darkness. Platitudes, nothing but empty platitudes. War is the natural human condition, the only reality. Peace is an illusion, refuge of the weak. Only the strong deserve to survive. And so once again you plan to set the world afire. And you must admit, my emissary is efficient. Her plan ingenious and her timing a masterpiece. To bring war at the time of year celebrated as a time of peace on earth and goodwill toward man, this is indeed cruelty unworthy even of the god of war. <laughs> Forever moralizing. Such an exercise in futility. But your plan will fail, for there is on earth a champion of the forces of love who has foiled your plans before and will do it again. Wonder Woman. We shall see. We shall see. But now, let the play go on. <laughs> And back on Earth, in the children's ward of a hospital in Washington, D.C. Wonder Woman, you kept your promise. I got here as soon as I could. The children have been very depressed over Santa's disappearance. Everyone knows about it. Poor things. I just heard the news myself. I'll do my best to cheer them up. And as Wonder Woman moves from bed to bed, the sad little faces light up at the sight of their famous visitor. Are you really Wonder Woman? Yes, I am. What's your name? I'm Susie. Susie. What a nice name. And what would you like Santa to bring you tonight? A doll and a teddy bear. Okay, Susie. 
I'll see that Santa gets the message. Wonder Woman? Yes? Will you help find Santa so that he can ride tonight? Don't worry, Susie. I'll do my best. And what's your name, young man? I'm Johnny. Johnny Appleton. And what would you like for Christmas, Johnny? A baseball and a baseball glove and a bat. A ball, a glove, and a bat? Yeah, because someday I'm going to walk again and run and play with the other kids and everything. That's wonderful, Johnny. And I promise you, your name will be at the top of Santa's list. But what if you can't find Santa? We'll find him. You'll see. Her name is Beth. She's been this way all day. Oh, my! Tears on the day before Christmas? Would you like to tell me what's wrong, Beth? Oh, it's Wonder Woman. I'd like to help you, if you'll let me. Nobody can help. Maybe Santa can. If it's something you want, I'll tell him, and maybe he'll bring it to you. Santa Claus isn't coming tonight. Of course he is. I saw him downstairs. That's only a make-believe Santa Claus. The real Santa Claus isn't coming. I know he isn't. I'm afraid there's no consoling her. If only we had some idea where he might be. Wonder Woman, there's an urgent call for you. You're wanted at the White House immediately. <laughs> Thank you for coming, Wonder Woman. I am honored, Mr. President, but I don't understand. It's about the Santa Claus kidnapping. Kidnapping? So that's what it was. Yes. We received a radio message from the kidnappers. We don't know who they are, where they're holding him, or why. But they demanded that you be present when they contact us again. The call is coming in, Mr. President. Stand by. Yes, she is here. Good. Then listen carefully. In return for the release of your precious Mr. Claus, we demand $500 million, delivered personally by Wonder Woman. She must come alone, here to Christmas Island, and no tricks. At the first sight of any plain submarines or warships, the prisoner will be executed. That is all. And so, von Richter... Phase two has begun. Excellent, Your Majesty. And now, do you know what happens when Wonder Woman arrives? Well, I thought... We will take her prisoner, put her in the dungeon with our other prisoner, and then, as we take off in our specially equipped command plane to carry out the third and final phase of our plan... Yes, Majesty? Wonder Woman and Santa Claus... And Christmas Island will all be blown to kingdom come in one great explosion. <laughs> and do you see the delightful symbolism in this? Symbolism? Ah, yes. Santa Claus, a place called Christmas? The decadent trappings of a decadent world. I shall restore the Germany of old, the power of the ancient gods, and the glory of the master race. Yahoo! The master race! And with our robot satellites in orbit, ready to bomb the major capitals of the world at my command, I shall demand the surrender of all nations in the United Nations. And we shall fly to Washington, D.C., where I will be crowned Queen of the World. Heil Brunhilde! Soon, Wonder Woman in her invisible plane is racing at incredible speed to her rendezvous with Doomsday on a remote island in the mid-Pacific. The ocean is so large and that island so small, but I must find it for the sake of children everywhere. Ah, that must be it. That atoll down there looks uninhabited. No buildings visible. Nothing but coral reefs and... Wonder Woman? Calling Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman here. Go ahead. On the inside rim of the coral reef, you will see a blinking light. Yes, I see it. It marks a camouflaged landing platform. You will land there. The platform will descend, carrying you to my subterranean command post. Bring the money and do not attempt to communicate with anyone. As Wonder Woman lands on the platform, it descends far below the surface and stops. 
a door opens. And she steps out into a brilliantly lit cavern, in the center of which stands... Brunhilde! I thought that voice was familiar. Fondel woman, alias Diana Prince. I've been looking forward to this moment for a long time. There's no time for small talk. I've brought the money. Here it is. Now, turn your prisoner over to me, as per our agreement. Certainly. Come with me. Here we are. Von Richter, open the cell door. Yes, Majesty. As Wonder Woman steps inside to lead the prisoner out, the door slams shut behind her. <laughs> there you are. Company for the prisoner of Christmas Island. I should have expected a trick of some kind. In warfare there are no tricks, only tactics and strategy. And this tactic has succeeded. You, as a prisoner, I really wanted, not that fat little man. Then why not release him? Let him ride tonight for the sake of little children everywhere. He will ride no more. From now on, there will be a new order, a new discipline, a new race. There will be no room for the sentimental claptrap and nonsense that he represents. And now, we leave you. What are you going to do with us? Since even you cannot break through the indestructible metal this cell door is made of, I'll tell you. My command plane is in a hangar in the next room. Von Richter and I will board that plane. Then we reach the surface and take off. The push of one button will destroy you and the fat one and this ridiculous little island. How nice. The push of a second button will release nuclear bombs from my satellites, which will destroy New York, London, and Moscow. The push of a third button... Well, what about the third button? If the United Nations do not surrender unconditionally and crown me queen of the world, I shall destroy every major city on Earth. And now, Wonder Woman, goodbye forever. But Brunhilde had forgotten the powers of Wonder Woman's magic tiara. Pounding the rock wall of the dungeon with the tiara, Wonder Woman cuts through it like butter, and the cell door to which it was attached falls off at a touch. There, we are free. Come, good friend, we must hurry. Running to the platform that had brought her down to the cavern, they board her invisible plane, and the platform rises to the surface just in time for them to see Brunhilde's plane take off. We must get off this island before she blows it up. Hurry, robot plane. Made it just in time. Gotta bring down that command plane now. Can't let her destroy the world's greatest cities. Maneuvering her speedy craft close to Brunhilde's plane, Wonder Woman hurls her magic lasso around the tail of a much larger plane, just as Brunhilde is gloating over the destruction of Christmas Island and the supposed demise of her most dangerous foe, and prepares to send the electronic command to the satellites to drop their bombs. Phase two has been completed, Von Richter. Wonder Woman is no more. Now we proceed to phase... And as Wonder Woman watches the plane sink beneath the waves, suddenly she sees an extraordinary sight. A great white horse rising out of the water, carrying a Valkyrie. Like the legend of old, it's Brunhilde. Yes, it was the warrior maiden Brunhilde on her final journey to Valhalla, home of the fallen god heroes, never to return to Earth again. After notifying Washington of the necessity of disarming Brunhilde's orbiting satellites, Wonder Woman flies her companion back to his headquarters in the far north. We made it, and in time. Thank you, Wonder Woman, not just for what you have done for me, but for the children of the world. And at the stroke of midnight, once again we hear a familiar voice and a welcome sound as Santa rides again.
on Vixen, on Prancer, on Rudolph, on Dancer, and Merry Christmas, Wonder Woman, and everyone, everywhere. Christmas Eve in Gotham City. Is it our imagination, or is the city more peaceful than usual? Has the magic of Christmas silenced the screaming sirens, the whine of bullets, the thousand frightening voices of terror in the city at night? We find Batman and Robin wondering about the same thing as we join them. You know, Robin, it's been a pleasure just relaxing at home for a change. Yeah, no special calls for help from the police or anybody. And I kind of like it for a change, too. The only thing on our schedule for tonight is the Christmas party at the Southside Mission down on Skid Row. And come to think of it, uh, we better get going. Okay. I'll get it. Hello? Hello. Is this Batman? Yes. I have a singing telegram for you. How nice. Sing away. I wish you a deadly Christmas. I wish you a deadly Christmas. I wish you a deadly Christmas and no more New Year's. Who is this? I can assure you, friend, if you go out tonight, you won't live long enough to find out. What was that all about? No, nothing. Just some creep crawling out of the woodwork. Come on, uh, let's get to the party. I don't want to be late. And as they make their way through the shadowy streets of the city... Don't turn around, Robin, but I think someone's following us. How do we handle it? When we reach the corner just ahead, slip around fast and we'll grab him when he comes by. Ready? Now. He's coming closer. Okay. Now. Gotcha. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry, madam. I thought... How dare you! I'm going to call the police! Help! Help! She's too hysterical to listen to explanations. We'd better get out of here fast. Are you sure someone was following us? Well, I thought... I wasn't sure then. I am now. Over here, quick. In this doorway. Did you see where the shots came from? Right across the streets. We're trapped. Hey, Batman! Why don't you just walk out nice and easy like when you're a little friend and get this over with? Ha 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 ha! Decked him all with an M3 volley. Fa la 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 la. Tis the reason I'm so jolly. Fa la 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 la. Now I know who that is. It's Rudy Snow, alias Rudolph the Red Nosed Hitman. Hey, Rudy! Oh, you remember me, eh? How about a deal, Rudy? You let us go and I'll let you go. Let me go? Ha 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 very funny, but you're just wasting time, Batman. What do we do? You bluffed and work. It was no bluff. Watch this. The batarang, of course. It can go around corners. Works like a boomerang. Here she goes. Oh! Bullseye! There you are, Captain. It's Rudolph, the red-nosed hitman. Must be wanted in a dozen states. And you got him. See you later. Hey, wait a minute. Any other charges besides assault with intent to murder and illegal possession of a deadly weapon? Yes. Charge him with disturbing the peace on Christmas Eve. think it would be better to go the rest of the way by Batmobile? Oh, I don't think so. With Rudy in jail, we shouldn't have any more trouble. And it's such a nice, clear night for walking. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. Da, 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 dee, do, da, 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 da. Look at that crazy driver. He must be drunk, getting right at us. And his light shining right in our eyes. Quick, use the bedrooms. Flinging their ropes so that they catch onto a ledge two stories up on the building behind them. The two clamber up out of harm's way as the killer car, driving right up on the sidewalk, goes out of control. <laughs> Phew, what a mess. Do you recognize either of those two characters? Do I ever. 
This one, the driver, is Maxi the Minstrel Man, bouncer at a sleazy go-go joint downtown. What a name! Fancied himself a song and dance man, but soon discovered his only talent was beating up helpless drunks. Any other one? Look, he's dressed in a Santa Claus suit. It's Sammy, the Southside Santa. For years, he's been a fixture in the Christmas scene down there. I don't get it. He's been involved in petty larceny, but never anything like this. Look, he's still alive, trying to say something. You're right. Sammy, it's me, Batman. Can I do anything for you? No, no. Just listen. Just listen. I didn't want to be in on this. He made me. Who, Sammy? Who made you? I could never kill. He's gone. Poor Sammy. Really as gentle a man as you'd ever meet. Well, one thing is for sure. Someone is out to get us. And whoever it is knew exactly when we went out tonight and where we were going. Someone at the Southside Mission? Yeah, the Southside Mission. After we call the police to clean up here, we're going to take a good look at that place. Seems to me there's more going on down there than a Christmas party for the down and out. In the Southside Mission, run and financed almost exclusively through the efforts of Dr. Jonathan Carroll, a hundred of the less fortunate of Gotham City are enjoying a delicious turkey dinner with all the trimmings. God bless old Dr. John. This is the first good meal I've had in a month. I don't know what we do down here without him. When I broke my arm a month ago, he fixed it up and wouldn't charge me a cent. Look, he's getting up on the stage. He's going to speak. Hooray for Dr. John. Yay! <laughs> Thank you, friend. I hope you're enjoying the meal. And don't be afraid to ask for second. <laughs> now, don't worry. I'm not going to bore you with any speeches. I wish we could have had some musical entertainment tonight. But instead... Batman and Robin, just in time. Come in, come in. That's Dr. Carroll. He runs the place, and he's the one who invited us down here. You think he may be the one... That... Awfully hard to believe, but let's play it straight. Well, Dr. John, nice to see you, and nice to be here. Quite an affair you've put together here. Oh, I had lots of help from my friends out there, <laughs> like Helen and William and Mrs. McCready there at the front table. Hi, Mrs. Mack, and especially Rodney Dugood. Rodney Dugood? Yes, Rodney's a regular here and practically my right-hand man. He's right over... Oh, not there. Must have stepped out for a bit. He'll probably be right back. But Rodney Dugood at that moment is up to no good. In his room in a dingy lodging house right across the street from the mission, we see a very different man from the gentle derelict befriended by Dr. John. Everything I tried failed. My warning not to go out didn't frighten him away. Two attempts to eliminate him were bungled. This time we will not fail. You got a straight now. When you hear the singing, that's when you make your entrance. Only one thing, boss. If you goes back in there, ain't Batman gonna recognize you and, and blow the whole thing? Don't worry. I doubt if even the brilliant Batman will be able to tell that Dr. John's most successful example of rehabilitation, Rodney Duguid, and escaped convict Rodney Crawfield are one and the same person. Meanwhile, back at the mission... My friends, I'm sure you all know Batman and his young friend Robin. Batman, won't you say a few words? Okay, but just as few as I possibly can. <laughs> I am delighted to be here and see all of you. And I promise you and Dr. John, I'll always be a friend of the Southside Mission. Thank you. Ah, oh, Rodney, there you are. Come up and meet Batman. It's an honor to shake your hand, sir. Glad to meet you, Rodney. Dr. John's told me a lot about you. Thank you. Uh, can I get you something from the kitchen? Some cake, uh, perhaps some coffee? Sounds good to me. Something strangely familiar about this guy. And Dr. John, why not start the carol singing? I think you'll enjoy it, Batman. Somehow it seems to take on a special meaning down here. I'll be right back. Good idea. See what I mean, Batman. He's such a good man. Yeah, I guess so. What did Rodney mean by special meaning? I wonder. How about it, everybody? Feel like singing? Yeah! yeah. 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 
Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. <laughs> Now about silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, Sleep in heavenly peace, Batman. But with the fine-tuned reflexes of the super athlete that he is, Batman leaps to a chandelier hanging from the ceiling above the tables and swings like a trapeze artist the whole length of the hall, landing on top of a very surprised would-be assassin. That makes three down tonight. Good going, Batman. Beside himself in rage, an infuriated Roger Crawfield witnesses the failure of his third attempt on the life of Batman. Fools! Incompetent fools! All of them! I should have known. If you want a job done right, do it yourself. Throwing all caution to the winds, he grabs a rifle hidden in the kitchen, rushes to the stage, and aims at Batman, who is so busily engaged in tying up a dazed and befuddled fingers that he doesn't see the rifle aimed at his back. Your luck has run out this time, Batman. Rodney, no! Just as Rodney pulls the trigger, Dr. John pushes the rifle barrel up, and the shot goes harmlessly into the seat. Oh, fool! I should have got rid of you a long time ago. See how you like this rifle barrel over your head. Oh! And now I'm getting out of this crummy joint once and for all. Running out the back door, he races up the fire escape to the roof with Batman close on his heels. You might as well give up, Rodney. I remember you now, and I'll put you behind bars again, just the way I did six years ago. Oh, no, you won't, Bird Brain. <laughs> now, Mr. Gen, Rodney, ready or not, here I come. And then begins a wild chase across the rooftops of Gotham City, the frenzied efforts of the criminal to escape, making him an even match for the super smooth running machine we know as Batman. Maybe you can hitch a ride with Santa Claus, Rodney. He'll be coming any minute now. This will shut you up, smart mouth. You're running out of bullets, Rodney, and looks like you're running out of space, too. Look ahead. To his horror, Rodney sees that the rooftop of the next building is over 30 feet away. Give it up, Rodney. I've got you trapped. Oh, no, you haven't. And Rodney races forward in a desperate leap for freedom. Rodney, It is an hour later at the mission. The police and all the guests have gone. How do you feel now, Dr. John? Fortunately, it was a glancing blow, so I'll be all right. But the shock of learning about Rodney... Yeah, imagine using the mission as a recruiting center and headquarters for his gang of crooks. That's why he didn't want me to reach here alive. And he would have succeeded if it hadn't been for you, Dr. John. And if it hadn't been for you and Robin, who knows what would have happened to me in the Southside mission? How can I ever... Listen, the bells. Midnight. It's Christmas. Merry Christmas, Batman, Robin. And Merry Christmas to you. Yeah, Merry Christmas, Dr. John.